Hello and welcome everybody to today's book review. Today we are going to be reviewing Needless Casualties of War by John Paul Jackson. This book was first published in 2009 and the major premise of this book is basically how to do intercessory warfare or how do we engage principalities. John Paul Jackson is a fairly well-known individual in Pentecostal charismatic circles who talks about spiritual warfare. There's another book that I have read by him that's called Unmasking the Jezebel Spirit, and I have found his writing to generally be pretty good. I don't know very much about his ministry other than what I've read in these two books. I know that he talks about spiritual warfare. So the premise of Needless Casualties of War is basically that you have to be very careful and never really attack principalities or regional spirits or territorial spirits. And if you do do so, then there's very strict guidelines on how to do that. And you have to only really do this under the direct um, word of God, only if the Holy Spirit tells you to very clearly. And you have to be very careful when you do it, or else the devil's going to get you. And Jackson goes throughout his book and he shares uh, maybe a dozen or more stories of people who wrongly engaged in warfare with principalities and then got killed or got thrown in the hospital or their life was completely destroyed through a counterattack. So that was actually how I came to read this book because when I was in high school, I started to engage in what I thought was proper spiritual warfare with principalities. But I was not doing this right. I didn't know really what that looked like or how to do it. And I was doing it out of presumption. And I just, you know, would shake my fist at the second heaven and command this and that to let a region go. And what ended up happening to me and my house was a, a series of just super bizarre catastrophes. Our giant bay window in our house at that time got broken because somebody tripped into it. I went to the hospital shortly after that with some weird sickness that was making me throw my guts up and I get there and they're testing my blood and they find out there's so much potassium in my blood that it's about to give me a heart attack. So all these weird things happen and it was shortly after that that a pastor recommended this book to me. So having experienced what he was talking about in the book, I clung to what he was teaching and I basically from that point on said I'm never going to bother attacking principalities again. That's too dangerous. I'm not going to do it. Well, there is some pros to what Jackson is saying here. Like me, there are a lot of people who engage principalities and engage in second heavenly warfare in a very wrong way. The first wrong thing that Jackson points out, which is absolutely true, is presumption. If you're going to engage with principalities, you do not do it out of a place of presumption. If you're going to do deliverance, you do not do it out of a place of presumption. Now, he doesn't seem to bother talking about that very much because his premise is that we're not supposed to attack principalities, but you can attack demons that are possessing people. But really, it, the way I've seen it, it doesn't matter whether it's demons in a person or it's demons in the sky. All that matters is the place where you're coming from. If you come out of a place of presumption, then you're going to get yourselves hurt like the seven sons of Sceva. The second thing that he talks about is... And I would agree with this. It's really not our job to go around and walk circles around a town or a city and shake our fists in the sky and say, you Jezebel principality or you this principality, you're going to let these people go and go, go on and on like that. That's really not how to engage in second heaven warfare. And Jackson points that out and he rebukes that and I agree with that. However, I will say I believe there's a lot more negative about Jackson's book than there is positive. First of all, when I read this book, I really left with much more confusion than I did clarity. My previous understanding of spiritual warfare was that we have authority over demons. We have authority over even big demons because Jesus says, we have, I, have, I have all authority on heaven and we are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. So according to that, I understand we have authority over principalities in certain circumstances too. That's what the Bible says. Well, Jackson very conveniently explained away all those verses where we have authority over demons. And it really left me quite puzzled on what do we do when it comes to territorial spirits. So I just said, I'm just not going to do anything and I'm going to leave it all alone. Uh, the second thing uh, beyond just the general confusion is that it, it really inspired a sense of fear. It didn't inspire a fear of God, but it inspired a fear of the devil because throughout the whole book, he gives examples of people who tried to engage in some kind of 
uh, heavenly warfare incorrectly, and they got slammed, they got killed, they got thrown into apostasy, their church crashed, their wife died, and all this, and it's, you better watch out, or the devil's gonna get you, and I really believe that that's just not biblical at all. God never wants us to be afraid of the devil. God never wants us to fear even big demons. Jesus has authority over all demons. Jesus has authority over all principalities and powers. We always want to have the fear of God, and when we're coming from a place of the fear of God, we're usually coming from the right place. And even if the devil can do some kind of counterattack, the promise of Jesus stands firm that I have given you authority over all snakes and scorpions to trample on them and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Now, there are times when the devil does things and we get harmed, but that promise is firm. Sometimes there may be counterattacks, but Jesus's promise is firm. Satan does not just have a right to willy-nilly counterattack us, unless we're coming out of a place of pride or presumption or acting outside the will of God. Now, that's correct, but uh, Jackson doesn't really provide that there. I really felt leaving that book that I just was afraid of the devil and I didn't want to bother him. I didn't want to engage him. This was before I entered into deliverance when I read this book. Uh, so it really just left a sense of fear, and that's really a negative thing. And finally, though Jackson provides some helpful guidelines on how to engage in second heaven warfare. He pretty much just doesn't want you to do it at all. And he comes against some of the right things. Like he he's binding and loosing, for example, is a very biblical method of dealing with terrestrial demons. You bind the strong man. Jesus says, before you can plunder a strong man's house, you have to bind him. What does this mean? Okay, there's a principality over a region. Before you can go and plunder his goods, bring the gospel in and plunder the people out of the hand of the enemy and bring salvation. Before you can do that, you have to bind the strong man. Now you can look, and in practical experience, this is definitely the case. If you look at church history, you look at people that go into regions that are super demonized, they have to do an intercessory warfare campaign before there is any kind of real fruit in the evangelistic front. Uh, Derek Prince talks a lot about this. I hear a lot of other people talk a lot about this. But John Paul Jackson, he comes against that. He says, you don't do binding loosing. That's not, you're misunderstanding it. It really means this. It really means that. And he just kind of poo-poos on all that. And I believe that's just a, a bunch of extra biblical stuff. And, and there's a few other little things in there that he really just slams. And, and you're left feeling like, after reading this book, that uh, if I just step out of line, uh, the devil's going to get me, so I better just leave him alone. And that is not the attitude to have. So I'm going to make a separate video on this, and I'm going to leave a uh, link in the description to what is proper intercessory warfare, uh, because there is a right and a wrong way to do it. And the most important thing I can say is coming out of a posture of the fear of God and intimacy with God, and not coming out of a place of presumption. The second most important thing is to not try to use intercessory warfare as a replacement for deliverance and other biblical ministries. And the third thing I will say is that it's not just a shaking your fist in the heaven and just commanding principalities to topple down. There's a process to this. We bind principalities, we loose the angels of God, we spend time in intercession, and we pray, and we pray, and we pray. This is a campaign. This is not a one-day battle. And we pray for God to break through in a region. And as we do this, we the binding of that principality begins to temporarily hinder it. So we cannot prevent people from repenting. Then when we bring the gospel, when we bring deliverance, when we bring healing, people come out from under that principality. They stop worshiping it. They repent. They turn away and they turn to God. And then that process of repentance, humbling yourselves and seeking the Lord, that process is what topples the principality. Now, the intercessory warfare side of that is long-term praying and fasting, binding the principalities in the heavens, and loosing the opposite, loosing the angels to go and to fight that thing. That is the right way to do it. Now, there's a bunch of wrong ways where people, silly Pentecostal people, they get up and they dance counterclockwise to reverse the spells of the enemy, and they wave worship banners and all that. and Whatever. You do whatever you want. There may be some... Uh, truth to that, there may be some truth to those things. I'm not against dancing or waving worship banners, but if you really want to engage principality, it is in-depth intercessory warfare, and that is how you do it. Now, I don't appreciate the fact that Jackson has uh, kind of done some fear-mongering in his book, and he really wants people to shy away from that. So overall, I give this book a 3.5 out of 10 because I believe it does more harm than good. 
there are some little good things in there and there are some good things he points out. But if you want to know about intercessory warfare, there's definitely better places to learn about it than from this book. I may suggest some of the pamphlets from Win Worley's ministry on binding and loosing and warfare prayers that has a much better, uh, more biblical approach to intercessory warfare. Another book would be The Three Battlegrounds. We're going to be reviewing that in a future video. But um, I do not recommend this book. So thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please like, share, subscribe. And I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And we hope to see you next time.